welcome to Snack Time's very first video. My name is Ben, and in this video, I'm going to take you through the process of setting up an evil proxy, specifically the open source project Evil Gen X. You're going to need a couple of things for this project. You're going to need a domain name and a Linux box. This Linux box could be a virtual private server, a dedicated server. All it needs is really just the ability to be accessed from the internet. I'll walk you through this entire process from setting up and picking up a server to setting up the domain and harvesting tokens. So first, let's go ahead and start off by finding ourselves a really cheap VPS that we can use for testing and won't cost us an arm and a leg. I like to start off at this site. Uh, they usually have pretty good deals going on. And one of the better ones that I've have actually seen is anything with Racknerd. So you can pretty much type, come in here and type in just their, their name and pretty much look for any of these deals. Even if they say Black Friday or New Year's, typically they're still going on and you can still get them for the same price. So for instance, we could go to the 2024 New Year's, which has passed a couple months ago, and we can still get these prices. I do want one with IPv6, and so typically anything with IPv6 with Ragnar specifically has to come from certain locations, So, and those locations require the, the 2 gig version, so that's what we're going to order. It's $17 for the year. Definitely not too bad for a thrifty hacker like myself. So just going to order this. Make sure when you're ordering it, you specify the LAX version. Since we are going to need an IPv6 address, now that we've spun up our VPS, we're ready to go. I went ahead and chose Ubuntu version 18.04. We are going to need a little bit of information. We have here, I have my IP address and I have my uh, IPv6 address as well. So let's go ahead and sign into our into our server. All right, so we need to make sure we have wget installed and we do, that's good to go. And the next thing I need is to go ahead and download uh, Golang. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll check my directory and I'm in my home directory, which is perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and wget this file. Awesome. And let's go ahead and I'm going to quickly punch in here and extract this file. I'm going to extract it to the user local folder. Next, I'm going to set my path. Okay, good to go there. Now we need to make sure that git and make are both installed. Next we need to obtain our URL for Nginx. So I'm just going to copy the URL in my browser. I'm going to come back to our Linux box. I'm just going to do a git clone and we're going to paste in that URL. What this will do is this will go ahead and download it into our evil GenX2 folder. We're going to run make. Once that's done, we'll just cop into our build folder and we should find our executable there. We can test it. Make sure it's going to work okay. Let's put sudo in front of that. All right, doing pretty good. So it's essentially saying it needs our fishlet path. Fishlets are little 
uh, YAML files that it uses to replicate what the office login should look like and other information too. You can write your own, but since I want to save time, I'm going to go ahead and use a couple of fishlet files that uh, Jan Baker created. So let's go ahead and clone his repo into a temporary folder because we're only going to use the, the fishlets out of there. All right, so with a little bit of Googling, we got his, his GitHub right here. As you can see, it's a little bit older, but his includes fishlets, whereas the newer version of Evil Gen X does not require you to write your own. But this is a great place to start. Uh, if you wanted to create your own, you can use these some of these as a template just to kind of get a grasp on how to do that. We're going to save time. We're just going to go ahead and use this. So I'm going to copy that URL. I'm going to go ahead and git clone that into this folder in my temp folder. I'm going to hop in here to their folder right here and into fishlets. There's my fishlets that I want. I'm going to go ahead and copy those. Let's just make it easy. All right, cool. Now we have our fishlets. Let's go ahead and tell Evil Gen X where our fishlets are being stored. Helps if I type it right. So there's a couple of things that we need to do that we're missing here. As you can see, we've had a couple of, of conflicts, but that's okay. We can clean those up later or not. We're really only going to concentrate on Office for now. But if you want to target any of these other platforms, you may have to do a little bit of house cleaning. All right, so first thing, let's go ahead and set and give it the information it's going to need in order for us to uh, to use the URL that we're, we're going to purchase from Namecheap. All right, now we need to set our IP address, our external IP address. thing that we want to cover is our blacklists. If anybody ends up navigating to our URL, we don't want them to automatically see what we're doing because that may end up getting us on some sort of blacklists here. It's the last thing that we want. Uh, so if you take a look at the Evil Gen X article, it explains how the blacklists work. We're going to be using unauth, which basically will block and blacklist any IP address that just happens to come across our URL without knowing the exact URL that we're using for our evil proxy. All right, next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to pick our fishlets and tell it the host name that we're going to be using and our domain name. So we're going to be using uh, the fishlet 0365 with the host name of notlegit.site. Let's go ahead and enable it and see what we get. All right, so we've got some error messages we need to deal with. It's essentially saying it can't obtain the, the certificate. And this is most likely due to the reason of us not having the URL or the uh, DNS pointed to this IP address. Let's go ahead and fix that. For this, I'm using Namecheap, but feel free to use whatever registrar you have. For our DNS, we're going to uh, do a couple of different things you may not be used to, but I'll try to walk you through it. Uh, we're going to go to our advanced DNS here. Instead of making individual entries, we're going to make a 
a name server with this guy. This will be an S1. And done. And this is going to be the IP address of our server for both of these. You're not going to see them down here quite yet. But I'll show you where to look for them. All right, once they're in here, you can just hit search. And there's our, our name servers. So we're going to take this right here. We're going to go back to domain. And we're going to make this our DNS server. So we're going to change it from basic to DNS. Paste this one right here. Remove that extra space. Paste this right here. Change that to 2 because remember we made NS1 and NS2. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. And let's jump back to our server and see what it says. So notice that we're having trouble getting our name server bound to port 53. So let's go ahead and see if we can fix that. First we need to find out what's listening on 53. Let's do a net stat. Tunnel P. <laughs> and let's see what we got here listening on 43 or 53. We have something right here listening on 53 and that's going to cause a conflict. So it's probably the system D resolved. Let's go ahead and stop that. stopped. Let's see if it's still listening. All right, it's not. If that's the case, we may want to go ahead and disable that, especially if we plan on running this repeatedly. So go ahead and remove that for now. You can always add it later. Now let's find our... Okay, that's better. Alright, nothing about DNS servers being wrong. I'm going to check that out and make sure that's correct by uh, using a fishlet that I haven't registered yet. I'm going to enable Reddit. If you ever run into this, give it about an hour. And it just simply means we've tried too many times and had failures. Uh, so Let's Encrypt limits you. So we'll see you back here in about an hour. One debt to society later. All right, we should be good to go. Let's try one more just to make sure. Yep, we're all good. As long as you're seeing that the the server is picking up the certificates, then that means it's going ahead and it's uh, setting up those subdomains for us and acting as a DNS server. Let's go ahead and move on to our next step. Now we're going to create our lures, and this will be the specific URL that you will put in your phishing email to try to get someone to click, and eventually they'll enter their credentials. This to redirect URL will, what that'll do is after they have successfully authenticated, instead of popping them, you know, back into your URL, it will redirect them to Office, and uh, the person will think that they have failed. Something's happened. They haven't been able to successfully authenticate, and they'll retry and they'll get into their account, and they won't suspect anything has happened. So after this, we're going to go ahead and get our URL for zero. And we see that our URL is not legit site, and then this little extra string over there. So this is what we'll be putting in our phishing email. So now that we've tricked our victim into clicking on our link, probably through a phishing email, it's going to take them to the sign-in screen that looks perfectly legit, other than the URL at the top, which is pretty much the dead giveaway here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Use my super strong password here. Let's 
asking me for my number on my phone. Well, I'm going to go ahead and prove that, type that in. Oh, yeah, I want to stay signed in. Oh, something happened. Well, I guess I have to sign in again. Maybe it just didn't take it. But what you didn't see in the background is this. We've intercepted the username and the password, as well as if we look at our sessions, we can see that we've captured his session as well. So when you do sessions two, this is the cookie that we'll need to, to drop into our browser uh, through just a simple plugin and that'll let us into the account. Let's go ahead and jump back to our other browser here. So now that we have our Chrome browser, we just need to add a little plugin so that we can go ahead and import those cookies. Let's go ahead and go with Cookie Editor. Looks easy enough. Okay, got our cookie here. Let's go ahead and pin it. Let's head off to our office sign in. And as you can see, we're not signed in at all. So what we need to do is we need to import that cookie that we got in our other screen here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole thing right here. And let's go ahead and import it, paste it, import, and let's refresh our page. And there we go. We're in with no authentication necessary able to go ahead and pop open Mr. Benjamin Franklin's email. But he doesn't have anything interesting in there. You'll probably spend more time setting up your virtual private server, getting that configured, than you will the actual software. So now that you can see how easy this is, you can inform your colleagues, friends, and family what to look out for. Don't click on any link in an email, especially one that asks you to sign in once you click it. It's a dead giveaway. Also, uh, always check the URL. If Mr. Franklin did had to check the URL from that phishing email, he would have seen that there was something not quite right about it. Hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks so much.